a grievous word stirs up anger. The tongue of the wise uses knowledge aright, but the mouth of fools pulls out foolishness. I read you Proverbs 15, verse 1 and 2. May the Lord have blessed to read the hearing of the Holy Word. Amen. 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 Let us pray. Lord, let us pray. All right. Oh, Heavenly Father, Lord, before I ask you for anything, I want to thank you for everything. Yeah, 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 yeah. Because you've been so good to us, Father. Yeah, yeah. You woke us up this morning in our right minds, Father. Started us on our way. Gave us a word of praise. And Lord, we glorify you with that name. Father, we ask this morning that yes. you would bless this congregation. Yes. Bless us in our worship service. Amen. And through it all, Father, we pray that you will be glorified. Yes. Father, we pray for those that wanted to be here this morning, but through whatever circumstances they faced this morning when they woke up, they were not able to make it. For those that are on the way, Father, we ask that you would bless them with traveling grace and arriving mercy. We pray this morning, Father, for the sick and for those that are shut in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We pray this morning for the doctors and for the nurses and all of those. Sister Robinson, we thank you. And the health care. Yeah, yeah. We pray for our police officers. We know, Lord, that all of them are not good police officers. But I hate to think that we would have to live without those who are truly trying to do the work. So we pray for them, Father. We pray for the firemen that risk their lives putting out fires that sometimes we carelessly stop. Father, we pray for our pastors. Lord, and we thank you for sending us a true man of God. One who is devoted to preaching your compromising word. Father, we pray for his family. We pray for our sister, Pastor. And we thank you for him as well, Father, because he too preaches your compromising gospel. And we pray for his family. In fact, Father, we pray for every family that are somewhere this morning or somewhere at home on social media yeah, 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 yeah. listening to your uncompromising word. Father, we ask now that you would forgive us for all of our sins and for all of our flaws and for all of our shortcomings. We ask you, O oh Lord, if you would bless us and look over. Sometimes when we fail to pray like we're supposed to. We ask that you would forgive us when we think thoughts that we're not a, we know that are not pleasing to you. We ask you to forgive us when we say things that are hurtful to others. Father, I ask if you would stop by Ukraine this morning, Father. For there are people over there that are being killed and tormented because somebody else yeah. thinks they're supposed to have what they might yeah, yeah. But Father, we are a lot like that. Please, Lord, forgive us. And Father, as we go higher in our service, Lord, let your Holy Spirit show up in this house, this house of the Lord, where today we plan to have a good time. Yeah, 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 yeah. A good time in the Lord. Yeah. And when our pastor preaches the, preaches the word, Father, we pray that every ear we be tuned into you, Lord. Because there is a message in your word, Father, that we all can receive and live by each and every day. And Father, for the son that you sacrificed at Calvary, we give you thanks, we give you glory, we give you honor. And Lord, let us all say, in the name that is above all names, Jesus. 
Amen. Amen. We thank everyone for coming out this morning. We pray that everybody's feeling good. And I think because God has blessed us this morning, let's give him a hand of praise. Sister Abigail White, 
In the passing of her brother, Elder David E. Cross, his celebration of life was yesterday at the Fellowship Baptist Church located in Sherman, Texas. Amen. This was Uncle David Amen. Amen. Cross. Amen. Amen. Now we're going to go further into the announcements for one more thing here from our bereaved Deacon Andre Moore. Blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. Be a blessing to others, he says. The Moore family would like to thank those who called, you sent text messages, you prayed, you gave monetary gifts, you brought drinks, you just gave them a smile and a kind word during their time of bereavement. Third Avenue Missionary Baptist Church, your kindness will always be remembered. Amen. 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 That's Amen. a thank you note from the Moore family. Amen. Amen. On Tuesday, April the 12th, is the Hour of Power Noonday Service. Reverend Charles Reed will begin the service at 12 noon. That is in person here at 3rd Avenue, or you can participate virtually. <coughs> Another in-person service right here at 3rd Avenue. When? I'm so glad you asked. That's going to be Wednesday night. Amen. What time are we supposed to be here? 6.30 a.m. What is going on? Well, everyone is invited to hear the seven proclamations from Calvary with these guest ministers. Reverend Christopher Rodin. Amen. 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 Reverend Kayla Christopher. Amen. Reverend Joshua Pryor. Amen. Reverend Pierre Rockmore. Rockmore. All right. Reverend Samuel Pryor. Reverend James King, as well as Reverend Dwayne Hicks. Amen. 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 Faith and Fitness is having a virtual program this Friday where you can call in and learn about the DASH diet. DASH means Dietary Approaches to Stop Hypertension. It's a healthy eating plan to help you treat or prevent high blood pressure. All you have to do is call in Friday, April 15th, from 10 until 11 a.m., the flyer is in the foyer. There's a telephone number on there. <coughs> Free program to spread about getting our diets together. Amen. Amen. Now, know our fitness instructor's in the house, so we got to say amen to healthy stuff. You know? We have to let him know that we are eating healthy. My husband's walking again and everything, so, you know, no pressure. Amen. And of course, next Sunday is April 17th, and we're going to celebrate what? Easter. Thank you, Lord Jesus, if he allows us to see it Sunday. Next Sunday is Easter. Now we're going to get into our congratulations, and also we're going to do a few birthdays, and I won't be before you much longer. I have some good news. Congratulations to newlyweds, Deacon Derek Reeves and his bride. Amen. Monique Reeves. Amen. 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 Nate Ray has something for you at the end of service, Amen. but I want you all to know that they were united in holy matrimony yesterday, Praise and it God. was also his birthday. <laughs> Congratulations Amen. to the Reeves family. Amen. Amen. Also, happy birthday to Brian Williams, April 14th. That's the daughter of Sister Mimi Williams. And then happy birthday to Brother Joe Wilkerson. On the same day, April 14th, he's the husband of Sister Barbara Wilkerson. Amen. She's standing Amen. on his behalf. Are there additional known announcements for the week? If you'd like to share, stand up and let your family know. We're happy to celebrate with you. Sister Fred Cooper and then Brother Council. April the 16th uh, will be 10 years. My baby Sharonda Renee Williams be resting in the Lord. Amen. 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 Amen
Amen. 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 And also our church anniversary. Amen. 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 on behalf of my late brother, uh, Marvin Hall. He would have celebrated his birthday on the 14th of April as well. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Last year, I lost my oldest brother, but his wife, Shirley, she celebrated her birthday. Saturday, Friday. Saturday. Friday. 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 And we like to acknowledge her because she's been a pillar Amen. in the family. She Amen. Has, Amen. I don't call her my sister-in-law. I call her, hey, sister-in-law. <laughs> <laughs> And so we want to start with the congratulations song and then go to the birthday song. Amen. We're ready. Amen. <laughs> that I would like to make. One is a correction on the announcements that were read about the seven sayings that will take place this Wednesday. It will not be at 6.30 a.m., but it will be at 6.30 a.m. <laughs> 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 that I would like to make, I would ask that the, prayer, the church be in continued prayer. Uh, many of you may have heard about the sickness that has invaded the life of our very dear brother, cousin, former pastor, and friend, Pastor Michael Pryor. So let's be in prayer for him and his family and for the entire New Birth Church. Amen. Amen. It's a struggle that uh, he has to deal with, but God is able. Yes. 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 So, uh, but moving along, because I don't want to stay in that area too long, because you know how I feel about him and his family. Amen. Amen. But uh, I want to move on and say to us, let's continue to stand strong and stand together as a church. Amen. Amen. Uh, we are a growing church, and we are a strong church, and we are what I have always said, we are a beacon of light in a Amen. dark society. We are a unique church. We are one of few churches, of one of many churches that has survived over and over and over again. Not only have we survived, but we've also, also thrived. The church now, in my opinion, is in a better condition than it has ever been. And that's not because of me, it's not because of you, but it is because of the grace of God. Amen. And I just don't believe that God would strengthen us and hold us together and make us this example of what church looks like and how church uh, acts without giving us an assignment. Amen. God has something for us to do, and we have to be obedient to the Holy Spirit and accomplish the goals that he has set before us. Amen. 
Amen. Amen. Amen. Don't get scared, y'all. That just means we're going to move a little bit higher. Amen. 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 And again, I want to say to the uh, couples that were ma the couple that was married on yesterday, it was my honor and a privilege to uh, serve you and give the dedication and the finals to your marriage. Amen. And I told y'all, I, 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 my record is good. Now, don't y'all know all my record. Everybody <laughs> has given me the finals, so they still together as far as I know. And, and I, as always, I say, live in peace and in harmony and Amen. love one another. Amen. Amen. And y'all had some real, real good food. Amen. And uh, I, I want to say to Sister English, I know that you fixed my to, uh, to go plate because it was heavy. <laughs> but I ain't mad. <laughs> my wife tried to take it. And I wouldn't share it with us if you got your own. Remember, the third album of love, they passed. But I thank you all. And to the church for the church anniversary, let's let's be joyful. Amen. God's helped us. Amen. Amen. We couldn't have done it on our own. Amen. Because God loves us and He has a mission and a, a purpose for us. Amen. 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 Today we're going to go back to the book of Nehemiah. Amen. I want to know who all has have been studying the book of Nehemiah since I've been preaching in it so far over and over again. Has anybody been continuous and trying to, to be slick and get ahead? <laughs> Well, that, I mean, that's that's all right. I hope you've been reading something about it. <laughs> but uh, we're going to look at chapter 5. And chapter 5 is somewhat unique in the book of Nehemiah because it kind of changes courses. So usually and generally when we look into the book of Nehemiah, we always go to the mindset of the wall. Chapter 5 is a little different and a little unique. But we're going to stick with the book of Nehemiah and continue through it and until we tell the Lord says enough is enough. I want to ask one question and then I'll take my seat from the book of Nehemiah. Can anyone tell me how long it took to construct the wall? Excuse me. It took 52 days. You get an A for effort. Yeah. <laughs> it took 52 days to construct the wall. And the reason I asked that question, well, one reason I asked that question is if you get tired of me preaching it, just remember I just preached it for a few Sundays. But what do you think those that had to stay with the work for 52 days felt like? <laughs> and if they could stay faithful and complete the wall, you could stay yeah. faithful and listen to the word. Amen. Amen. I know I'll get you one way or the other. <laughs> But again, uh, first, Avenue, thank you for being so faithful. Thank you for, for coming in and worshiping God and keeping our spirits together. And thank you for praying for one another. Amen. And know that you do it because I can see the effect of it. I can see the prosperity of the righteous here in this place. Amen. So let us continue to walk in the spirit of unity and in love. Amen. And let us continue on this journey until the Lord calls us in. Amen. And we all get a chance to hear him say, well done, Amen. my good Amen. and faithful Amen. servant. Amen. And you know, you can really be happy, not just because God accepts you in, but because of your testimony, there are others that will be there because of what you shared with them while we're down here in this dark and dismal world. Yes, yes, so let yes. us continue to be that light that shineth in darkness. Amen. 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 God bless you. Thank you. Thank you.
life and a faithful life. Father, I just pray in the name of Jesus that we learn to walk in peace, love, joy, and in harmony because you are the giver of every good and every precious blessing that we have over our lives. And Father, I pray that we all be thankful and be careful to say thank you and hallelujah unto your name because truthfully you are the only true and living God our Savior. Both dominion and power and majesty be to thee both now and forever. And all of God's children said in unison, Amen. 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 In the book of Nehemiah, uh, beginning in chapter uh, 5, verse number 1, it reads this way. And there was a great outcry of the people and their wives against their Jewish brethren. For there were those who said, we, our sons and our daughters are many. Therefore let us get grain that we may eat and live. There were also some who said, we have mortgaged our lands and vineyards and houses that we might buy grain because of the famine. There were also those who said, we have borrowed money for the king's tax on our lands and vineyards. Yet now our flesh is as the flesh of our brethren, our children as their children. And indeed we are forcing our sons and our daughters to be slaves. And some, and some of our daughters to have been uh, brought into slavery. It is not in our power to redeem them, for other men have our lands and vineyards. And I became very angry. Let me read verse 6 again. And I became very angry when I heard their outcry. And these words, after serious thought, I rebuked the nobles and rulers and said to them, each of you is exacting usury from his brother. So I called a great assembly against them. Verse number six again says, and I became very angry when I heard their outcry and these words. I want to speak from a subject, an unscheduled smoke break from the wall. 
<laughs> this is an unscheduled smoke break. I worked right down the road for a few years, and uh, we had a time that was set aside for us to take a lunch break and then even a rest break. But they had what they had, uh, what they called outside this little shelter, and they had these canisters out here, and they called it the smoking slab. Yes, and every once in a while, it wouldn't be because of lunch, it wouldn't be because of a rest, scheduled rest, but every once in a while, we say, let's go take a, get us a smoke. Yes, sir. Now, I wasn't a smoker. I didn't never smoke cigarettes. Well, I can't say I wasn't a smoker because I smoked marijuana. <laughs> I might as well go on and tell it because some of you, you know where I'm coming yes, from. Sir. Yes, sir. But on the job, and at that time, I was not a partaker of any type of that type of smoke. I was with the other smoke. Um, well, but now here's the situation. Now we see that here is an unscheduled smoke break that Nehemiah has to deal with. As we have been studying and reading and preaching about here in the book of Nehemiah, the a bulk of the book deals with the building of the wall and the reconstruction of the relationship or fellowship with the believer and God. And the wall is being constructed so that they can have a place of privacy and a place of protection. The wall is to guard them, the wall is to protect them, and the wall is to separate uh, uh, evil man from godly men so that godly men can have fellowship with God. So now we see that we're at the point now that we have another form of opposition, but it's not because of the wall. We have a form of opposition now that that has taken a complete turn. For first, uh, second chapter, third chapter, and fourth chapter, you hear the wall mentioned over and over again. But when you read in the fifth chapter, you hear nothing about the wall. Well, when you get, oh, uh, well, these verses that I've read, you hear nothing about the wall. But later on, they'll get back to the reconstructing of the wall. So that's why I say this is a unique chapter here in chapter number five, because we are taking a smoke break. Yeah. I've learned that even though I don't smoke, there's sometimes you need to kind of get away from everything else that you're doing, because there's something else that is required of you. And I want to focus on Nehemiah. Nehemiah now is having to change hats. He is having to take off of his hat, take one hat off and put another one on. In other words, he is having to deal with another group of people and another situation. But I like the way he did it because it would show us a whole lot in life if we would just pay close attention to how Nehemiah handled this smoke break. When we look at Nehemiah, we know that from the uh, book of Haggai and Zechariah, he was once mentioned as one of the high priests. And we also know that he was very in, uh, instrumental in organizing and constructing the wall. He was one who was somewhat of an architect. He went out and saw the ruins of the wall and then found out what could be used in reconstructing the wall. And then he designed the wall and he got the vision from God as to what the wall would be constructed with and how it be, would be constructed, which is what normally an architect would do. Yes, so he wore a hat of an architect during the time of reconstruction of the wall, but he also was one who held a, a, a task of being a priest to the people. All right. Because whenever they had to do something for God, they had to get the information from the child of God or the spokesman for God. But now it's time for a smoke break. When we look at this text in chapter number five, we see where the people said that we've got a problem. We've got a problem. Nehemiah, we've, we've got a big problem. We have been heavily taxed. We have had to even allow our children to go into slavery. We have had to mortgage our land. We have had to uh, uh, try our best to come up with meat and bread in order to take care of our families. Right. 
And it's not because of really any punishment. It's because the tax collectors and the people of the world, they are attacking us by getting us with usury and they are forcing us to be in bondage and in slavery to them. Amen. So now we see where Jeremiah, Nehemiah turns around and says, well, let me take off my hat mm -hmm. and take off my robe yeah. and put on another hat. Yeah. Now Nehemiah start, begins to act as a governor. He's beginning to act as a governor between the people. And if you, if you pay close attention in verse number one, I believe it said that the brethren, we got angry at the brethren, or the brethren started taking advantage of us. Pay close attention to that. That lets us know that the ones that are taking advantage of you are kin folks. And if you keep on reading, if you keep on reading the text, it will tell you, uh, it says that our children are just like their children. It says that we have a need just like they have a need. Some of us have a large family with little food, while others have a small family with plenty of food. But the taxing is so tough on us that it's putting us all in a bind. And when the tax collector comes around, he wants his money, Amen. and then we are obligated to give him his money, but then they're using this measure of usury, and they are overtaxing us. Yes, yeah. The problem was squeezing us. Well, let me bring this to 2022. You know, I try to be an up-to-date preacher. This is similar what happens to us today. Amen. Today, in today's society, we are overtaxed. Sometimes we don't realize it. And then also, let me say this. Have you noticed by reading this text and reading the previous chapters in the book, it is often said that you are in the condition you're in and you don't have what you need and you don't have what others have because you keep giving it all to the church. But the truth of the matter is what you do have is because you have given your time, your talent, and your treasure to the church. And notice what you don't have is because you had to give your time, your talent, and your treasure to an evil tax collector. I dare anyone, any one of you to take a look at all of your bills and add them up and find me one that would be less than 10%. Find me one that will be less than the time you spend at church. You spend eight hours a day minimal on a job, 40 hours a week, but only two or three hours a week in service. Now, who's taking advantage of who? And what they give you in the world is always short of what they tax you with in the world. How many of us now are struggling with these home payments? How many of us now are struggling now and can't get a loan because they say your credit ain't good enough? Amen. But I, credit, I wouldn't need no credit if you didn't charge me tr triple the amount of what a house actually is worth. <laughs> I could pay for it with an honest day's work and an honest day's living, but then we are overtaxed and they try to hide it. Now, they give you a low interest rate but a high late penalty payment. Amen. Miss that payment if you want to. And now, and I guarantee you again, even that interest payment will be higher than that 10% that you have given to the church. And I'm not just talking about the 10% of finance, I'm talking about the 10% of time, the 10% of talent, and the 10% of treasure. But here we see in the text that the children now are complaining and say it's a problem. Can I make a suggestion to you? If you're having problems in this world today and you're struggling in life today, it's all right to go and tell the man of God. It's all right to come back to the church house and identify what the situation is and come up with a strategy to make things better. That's why I like where the poor came and the poor said to him, we're struggling with it and we're having a hard time with it. No, notice that there is no mention of the wall in chapter 5 or here in these verses in chapter 5 and it is because the church ain't your problem yeah, yeah, yeah. working in the church is not your problem it's what's going on outside of the church that gives every man a struggle 
you're not the only one struggling. The ones that's that outside that don't come into the trough into the church are struggling just the same. But this is a very informative message for all of us who consider ourselves to be God's children. Look what it says. It says these are the Jews. I often wonder, is Jew a race? Is it an ethnicity or is it a religion? But one thing I do know is the same folks. <laughs> he says to these other Jews I know some Jews and I, I'm very familiar with Old Testament scripture of the, of the law and I'm also pretty familiar with the church and the, the church and the grace age and I do know that there are some here in the grace age that says that they are the church that the Lord will say that get away from me I never knew you not all people that say that they are Christians will be going to heaven some will, some won't. But let me back up to the Old Testament when it says to the Jews, there is a remnant of God's children that he will come back and get. Some will be called Jews, but some will not be going into the kingdom of God with him. There, He says that I come to save a remnant. I come to save a group out of you, a mist out of you. But that was a side boy. Let me get back to where I was preaching at first. When we look now in the text, we see that the children were suffering and struggling. And now, the Bible says in verse number six, I believe, that now Nehemiah heard it and he got angry. That's where I come with my subject. It's time for a smoke break because he had smoke coming from his nostrils. He was sure enough hot. Now he has said, you have taken advantage of the people. You are taking advantage of them, and you know that they are not trying to harm you. They are only trying to survive, just like everybody else. And how could you do it to these people? Just because they are poor, just because they don't have what you have, you have no compassion for them, but what you simply want to do is take advantage of them. Can I tell you what the systems of society look like versus the church and the organism of the church is? The systems of society cannot survive and will not survive with what the world says, uh, uh, I mean, with how the church actually operates. The world has its own system that man has made, but the church has a system that we believe in that God has ordained. And if the world lives on that standard, the world system cannot and will not survive. Well, let me bring this home to you. The world system is chaotic and corrupt. And it survives off of your detriment at home. God's way of living will destroy the ways of this world. This is why you do not see the ways of God working in the systems of society. Well, let me, let, me, let me open this up a little further. The ways of God is in the scripture right here that we have just read. It teaches us that those that have need to share with those who do not have. Amen. It, says to us, it says to us in the text that those that have small families but plenty should share with those who have large families and are in need. The ways of God is for an organism and it operates off of love and compassion. Yes, it says that we should share with one another. We should console one another. We should help one another. Yes, and if you take that attitude and you orchestrate it in society, then society will fail. Most men will fail in society because we're not looking to get even. We're looking to get over. <laughs> This is what we're looking at in society now. It says that the tax collector were overtaxing. Wasn't overtaxing the rich. It was overtaxing the poor. Amen. And it really wasn't about taking money from them. If you keep on reading your notice, it was about enslaving them. Rich people don't need your money. Amen. Sounds kind of wrong, doesn't it? Rich people do, do not need your money. Reason being is they already got money. Amen. Rich people need your service. Yeah. Why do you think most jobs pay you less than the cost of living? Your job pays you enough 
just enough to get back there Monday morning. And when you sit down with your bills, have you noticed that those of us who are just trying to make a living, we have to sit down and budget Amen. stuff that we really shouldn't have to budget for. Amen. You do know you shouldn't have to budget for the necessities of life. You shouldn't have to budget to have groceries. Yes. You shouldn't have to budget to have a roof over your head. Amen. You shouldn't have to budget to have transportation. You shouldn't have to budget for a savings or budget for a vacation, but not the necessities of life. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right back. This is how they did the usury. This is how you put them in slavery. Pay them minimal to nothing. Then they will always need you. And I told you they don't need your money, they need your labor. Yeah. Amen. Have you noticed that they turn around and they don't pay you, but they hire you? Yeah. I ain't talking about race today. I'm talking about reality. <laughs> and this is where Nehemiah got upset. And he had to take a, a smoke break. Well, let me keep on going before I bore you. What he ended up doing was taking off that robe of a high priest. He took off his hat of, of an architect. And then he put on his uh, chalice of being a governor. This is what I like about it. Notice if you read the text carefully, you'll find out that uh, when Nehemiah became a governor again, he did not invite those outside to come inside of the wall so we can talk about it. He said, no, we ain't going to church. I'm going to you. Amen. Wasn't it Paul, I believe, that says, I've become all things to all men? Yeah. He knew how to get on your level, and he knew how to keep things in perspective. And let me say this for the church. Church is not your place to invite the evil in. Amen. Talking about we're going to talk about it. Yeah. No, nope, we'll talk about it out there. Yeah. That's why he put on the hat of a governor. Yeah. And as a governor, he said, let me go and talk to him. Let me go and deal with him. And the Bible says in verse number six, he got angry. And I know what you're saying. He got angry. You know when you get angry, you make mistakes. Nope, the Bible said angry, but sin not. Amen. And verse number seven lets you know that after he got angry, then he calmed down. Mm -hmm. And after he calmed himself down after being angry, then he went and spoke to those Jews and those tax collectors. And he went to their place because he said, you ain't coming into my place of worship All right. because you don't believe in my place of worship. Yeah. And that's the reason I tell you all the time, there is a separation of church and state. Yes. There is a separation of church and government. I know we all want to get along and sing Kumbaya, but I don't know Kumbaya. And Kumbaya has no place in the church house. And I'll, I have enough sense to know that the devil don't want to be in my worship and I don't want him in my Amen. worship. I deal with you Monday, but Sunday is for me and my Lord. I don't need any inside hindrances. That's why he says, let me go outside of the gate and go out there and deal with them. Well, when he went out and dealt with them, let me tell you a little bit more about chapter number five. It says that he went out and dealt with them, and when he went to them, he told them, what you have done is wrong. What you have done won't get you anywhere. What you have done will cause you to fail and not prosper. It takes a bold statement from anybody to go and speak against a whole system that has been set up and designed to bring about chaos and poverty and poverty-stricken situations. But only the child of God can stand in the midst of wolves and be humble as a lamb mm -hmm. and still tell them that whatever you do, it will not matter because God will take care of his children. Yeah. And I tell you, he told it to them in a way that they could understand. He did not tell it to them from a hat of being a priest or a prophet, nor did he tell it to him like it was a preacher. If you don't believe me, read the text. And if you read the text, you'll find out something very unique about this scripture in the Bible. Rev. Rowe, do you know in chapter number five, even though he did all this text, I'm talking to these evil people uh, on the way that they were treating God's children, and you know in this text, God is only mentioned one time. <laughs> 
the Lord is only mentioned two times in the whole text. That's why I say some stuff needs to be out in the street. Some stuff needs to be in the church house. But I noticed when Nehemiah got out in the world and had to deal with these men, he said, we ain't finna talk about church because I can tell you I already know the schemes of this world. When I get out here and deal with you, the first thing you're going to do is say, ain't you a preacher? Ain't you one of God's children? Don't you need to live by faith? And don't you need to trust God for your blessing? Well, I do live by faith, and I do trust God for my blessing, and that's why I'm mad when you keep trying to tap and take my blessing. And ain't nothing wrong with me telling you that what you're trying to do ain't going to work. I'm just on a smoke break right now. i got to get back to work after a while, so i got to get it all in while I can. So Nehemiah went and told them that what you're doing is wrong and what you're doing will not work. And I told you that he only mentioned the law, mentioned uh, God two times. He mentioned them once in verse number nine and he mentioned them again in verse number 13. Look what he says. He says in verse number nine, I'm going to skip down to the B portion. It says, should you not walk in the fear of our God because of the reproach of the nations, our enemies? He told the enemy, he told them who has done it, shouldn't you walk in the fear of God? And what he's saying to us, if you don't walk in the fear of the God, you will after a while. Amen. <laughs> because your money and what you're taking from people and what, how you're abusing people will not last. That's why I say don't get worried about the prosperity of the wicked. Because it only lasts for a season. Yeah. I'm looking at all of you in here now, and I'm trying to teach you and preach to you very simply. I'm looking at all of you, and all of you probably have faced the same things that I have faced and many others have faced. You did not get what you thought you deserved. You did not get what you desperately desired and worked for. But guess what? You're still here, and you're looking kind of good. The whole bunch of you in here now, they say your credit score is bad, but you're still driving nice feet. They told you your credit score didn't get what you, uh, we wasn't where you wanted it to be, but you're still living in nice homes, and you still got a roof over your head. You still got food on your table. You still got joy in your heart. You got peace that's a bad one. All understand, man, y'all ain't caught it yet. Nehemiah only went and told the people what they was doing wrong. He wasn't worried about what they was doing. He said, I'm just going to tell you because I know you ain't going to change. Nobody turns and changes and starts to act like God wants them to act until the Lord changes them. Amen. 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 I notice also in the text, Nehemiah really didn't tell them to stop. Mm. Yeah. He just went and told them what they were doing. Yeah. 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 Ramon, I got a good message for them. I hope they keep this from y'all. Y'all write this one down. Right. <laughs> Instead of always asking God to get us out of sin, mm. won't you try asking God to get sin out of you? <laughs> I know, I know, I know. I prayed myself over and over, Lord, take this burden off of me. Take this trouble off of me. Take this addiction from me. Take this sin out of me. I've been there, I've done that. And then I said, well, Lord, it might be better if you change me. I might be a better person. Amen. Then I realized something about scripture. God ain't about taking sin out of the world. He's about taking you out of the world. He tells you to come to him. Come to me, all you that labor and are heavy laden, and I'll give you rest. Come to me and, and, and learn of me. Follow me and walk in the way that I ask you to walk. Then you ain't got to worry about sin because I'm telling you, you're going to keep on walking and you're going to walk in some mess, through some mess, and around some mess. Amen. But if you follow in God, the mess won't get on you. Amen. Now, Nehemiah, I'm almost closed. Now, now Nehemiah has gone and he has spoken to those outside and he did not allow them to come inside and he simply spoke to them. And I told you, he mentioned, it two time, mentioned God two times. In verse number nine, he mentioned him. And then in verse number 13, he says, Then I shook out, the fo uh, shook out the fold of my garment and said, So may God 
shake out each man from his house and from his prosperity who does not perform the promise. I'll stop right there. This is what Nehemiah did. Nehemiah says, I'm working for the Lord and I've got my robe on to keep dust from getting to me. Yes. And I, when I get through working, usually I shake the dust off of my robe before I take it off. And then he's saying that this is what God is going to do for you. God said, God is saying to the, the children that are taxing or overtaxing the people, he says that I'm going to scatter you the same way. You're not going to harm my children. And dirt is not to be put into the lives of clean Christians. So therefore, you're not going to get me angry and you're not going to get me out of character. I'll get upset, but I ain't going to sin with you. We're not going to cuss each other out. We ain't going back and forth with it. I ain't going to try to make you do something that you don't want to do because I know when you have hardened your heart, it's, it's nothing can be done. And I say that about the world today. I, I, I know this is going to be a tough one, but you ought to quit trying to change the world because the Lord has already told us that it's going to be what it's going to be. Don't spend a whole lot of Sundays trying to convince people that you can make this world a better place. No, you can't. The only thing you can make better in this life is yourself. And the only way you'll ever get together is not by convincing the enemy to leave you alone, but you've got to learn how to convince yourself to leave the enemy alone. I done told you a long time ago, a lot of troubles would not be in your life if you did not entertain trouble. I ain't against the government. I got to live with them. I know what I got to do. I, I said this one time. Taxes are getting high. I had to pay some property taxes. And they, they were steep on me. And I said, my little old house ain't even worth all of this. But I got to pay these taxes. But you, instead of me going and protesting my taxes and telling them, folks, you're charging us too much for the conditions we're living in, you know what I end up doing? I said, why am I wasting good breath talking to somebody that don't care nothing about me? All they want is this little old money. So I bow down on my knees. And, and I'm encouraging all of you to do the same. Bow down on your knees and say, Lord, the devil wants this money. And they want to try to get me. And I done told them it's wrong. And they know that it ain't right what they're trying to do to me. But Lord, can you do this one thing for you? He said, come on, child. I know you're going to ask what I want you to ask. And you know what the Lord said? What I said? to the Lord, I said, Lord, if they want that kind of tax money, well, instead of me protesting, would you give me that tax money so I can give it to them so they can get on out of my way? If you don't believe me, you ought to read the scripture. The scripture told him when, I believe it was Jonah who needed some money to pay his tax, he said, go reach in the fish. Go on, get that money out of there. What you need to do, instead of trying to tell folks not to do it to you, you ought to tell God to keep doing it for you. Because as long as I live, if he has promised that he'll prosper all of us. Let me get out of here now. He has promised that he'll take care of all of our needs, our wants, and desires. That's the reason why I don't go out and argue. That's why I don't need to go out and march. You didn't see Nehemiah marching, and I ain't marching either. I ain't got time to be walking around them people and they looking at me and laughing at me and study raising taxes and they, they study doing things against me. You standing outside of business trying to handle business that goes on inside. If you don't have anything that they want, they ain't fooling with you. you. You better learn something about society. Unless you decide to get wicked with them, they won't have no business with you. You will not take the Lord and override what they believe in. The Bible tells us that God is for his children, and we ought to listen to him. We ought to trust him, have faith in him. Why are you asking somebody else to give you a blessing? And you have the blesser in your midst. When I wake up in the morning, I don't look at how the world is going to provide for me. I look at how God is able to rain down manna over my life. I don't worry about what man takes from me because he can't take nothing that God has not already given to me. Can I get somebody to say amen to the king of kings and the Lord of lords? This world tried to get me dead, but I looked up on a hill called Calvary. And God said, you shall live and not die because I paid the price that all men should live.
that we ain't going to make it. <laughs> Trying to say we ain't going to survive. Yeah. When I turn and look towards help, yes, sir. Yeah. And I talk to the master. Yeah. He shows me that you'll prosper and be in good health. Yes, when the world says no, God says yes. 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 When the world steals from you, God still provides. Yes. 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 Whenever the world takes my food from me, he's bread and a star. Yes. 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 And I don't have a friend because the world has become my enemy. I don't have to go to the glove to find a friend. I don't have to go to all these other strange places and try to convince somebody to sit down and listen to me. Because I've been in touch with Jesus. And he'll walk with me and he'll talk with me. And let me know that I'm his own. The scripture says if I bring him to my table, he'll sit down and sup with me. Ain't he knocking on your door? Let him come in. Then he'll sup with you and you and him. And peace and harmony shall reign. I hadn't found anybody like Jesus. Hadn't met anybody like Jesus. Ain't nobody do me like Jesus. Ain't nobody do me like the Lord. He picked us up, gave us a brand new walk, gave us a brand new talk, carried us through this dark and dismal world. Let the church say amen. Let all God's children worship him all the day long. Amen. Truly our hearts have been blessed by the word of God. Amen. Amen. Praise God for the smoke break. Amen. 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 True enough, our hearts have been blessed. And at this time, we see that the door of the church is now open. Will there be one to come? Will there be one to come? Amen. 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 Will there be one? Why don't you come at this time? Amen. gospel. 
Amen. Again, we thank you, Pastor, for the Word of God. Amen. Amen. And for those that are listening, we pray that God will continue to bless you in your journeys. Amen. At this time, we do want to recognize our visitors. Maybe you are a member of the church. You have invited someone as a guest. And you care to recognize them at this time. You are the floor, uh, the floor is yours at this time. Amen. Going once, going twice, three times. Amen. Amen. I see that we do have visitors, but I would say on the behalf of our pastor, Pastor Gaynor Wright, and the members of Third Avenue Missionary Baptist Church, we again thank you for coming to visit with us. Anytime our doors are open, please, and I say again, please feel free to just come on in and get in where you fit in. Amen. Amen. Pastor, do you have any words, sir? At this time, we be dismissed. Let us stand. Amen. Majesty, dominion, and power, both now and forever, we all say, Amen. Amen.